Have you ever found yourself straining to pass urine? Is it taking longer or have you noticed that your flow is weaker than it has been and you're wondering what's going on? You know, for some men, the problem isn't necessarily a prostate problem at all, and it can be the urethra. The urethra is the outlet pipe of the bladder, and on some occasions, the urethra itself can scar, cause obstruction, and result in urinary issues that are not dissimilar from an enlarged prostate. Hi, for those of you new to the channel, my name is Dr. Charles Chabert. I'm a urologist and director of the Prostate Clinic located here on the Gold Coast. As always, if you get benefit, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and if you have comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. In this video, I wanted to highlight for you what is urethral stricture disease, how is it usually managed, and what is a breakthrough new treatment for how we can manage this condition. All right, let's get into it. To begin with, the urethra is the outlet pipe of the bladder. It extends from the bladder base to the very tip of the penis. It passes through the center of the prostate, through the pelvic floor, and there's a natural U-bend, which is called the bulbar urethra, which is a very common site for us to see stricture disease. Stricture disease, in essence, basically means that someone has scar tissue in the outlet pipe, and that scar tissue can gradually and progressively decrease the caliber of the urethra, which occludes the bladder. The net result, in essence, is that men can develop obstructive and irritative urinary symptoms. The obstructive ones are slow flow, hesitancy, taking longer to pee. For example, are you the guy who's at the urinal that goes to pee, and other men are in and out and they've done their business and you're still there waiting for your flow to start or for it to trickle through. Irritative urinary symptoms are a reciprocal feature that develop when the bladder has been obstructed for a long period of time. They manifest as going more often, rushing to the toilet or getting up at night. Now, the way that we diagnose a urethral stricture really comes down to two key tests. One is direct visualization and the other one is an x-ray test. Direct visualization is a cystoscopy. It's a camera test. We do this either under a local anesthetic or a general anesthetic, and there will be enormous geographical variation with how this is done. In essence, the advantage to this is it allows us to directly visualize where the scar tissue is and we can treat the scar tissue at that time. The alternative test is a retrograde urethrogram, and that's a dye test where we inject dye through the urethra and take x-rays to try and establish the mud map, if you like, or the anatomy of a scar tissue. Where exactly is it? How long is the scar tissue? And how restrictive is the urethra? So a combination of those two tests can be used to actually diagnose the problem. Now, traditionally, there are two ways to manage a urethral stricture, the conservative way and the definitive way. The conservative way has always been to have a look with a camera and to stretch up using a variety of different, different techniques, but basically stretch up the scar tissue so that the caliber of the tube is wide open again. Sometimes we uh, cut the area of scar tissue to allow it to open. The challenge with this approach is that the probability of recurrence is greater. And so many of these men require repeated procedures or potentially some men may require to undergo intermittent self-catheterization, which is a process whereby we teach men how to insert a catheter themselves through the urethra with a view that it gives the outlet pipe a little stretch every day and tries to keep the tube open and prevent restriction or a reduction in the caliber of the tube with time. The alternative has been the definitive way, which is a urethroplasty. Urethroplasty, in essence, there are two key ways that we do this. One is by actually cutting away the length of scar tissue and joining the two ends together. A limitation of this is that if we have a longer area of scar, it's obviously more problematic to bridge that gap. The alternative is something called an onlay urethroplasty. And that's where we take a piece of tissue from somewhere else. And commonly that's from the buccal mucosa. 
That's from the in internal aspect of the cheek. And we take a strip of tissue and actually lay it on to where the scar tissue was to keep it wide open and prevent recurrence. The challenge with this, although definitive, is that men require a period of catheterization, two weeks, sometimes longer. Okay, so here now is the alternative to both of these pathways. More recently, we have the advent of a tool called OptiLoom. OptiLoom, in essence, is a balloon, and on the outer surface of the balloon is a chemical, which is called paclitaxel. And the vision with this treatment is that we place the balloon across where the scar tissue is, we inflate the balloon, so the balloon opens up, and it forces that chemical, the paclitaxel, into the wall of the urethra, and it's the process of diffusing this drug into the wall of the urethra that reduces the probability of recurrence. In many ways, it's not dissimilar to cardiologists where they do an angiogram and an angioplasty. An angioplasty you may have heard about, which is the procedure whereby a balloon is put into a blocked artery, the balloon is inflated, and that opens up that area of plaque. The difference is in the coronary arteries, the cardiologist will leave a stent across that area. With Optilum, we inflate the balloon, we leave the balloon inflated for around five minutes. After the procedure, a very fine catheter is left in place. In my practice, men are kept in hospital overnight, and the next day, the catheter is removed. So Optilum, certainly here in Australia, Optilum is done in hospital whilst men are asleep, and we use an image intensifier, or in essence, an X-ray machine, to guide us to ensure that the balloon itself is across the area of the scar tissue. Some men may be able to go home after the procedure with a caster. There will be huge geographical variation with regards to how men are managed afterwards. Now, as I said, this is a relatively new procedure. And if we look at the outcomes, we do actually have trial data out to five years. And what we see is that around 70% of men after Optilum are free from requiring repeated intervention. So 70% at five years do not need another procedure for their urethral stricture disease. If we flip that around, 30% of men will. Okay, I hope that uh, sheds some light on the potential for having scarring in your urethra. If you've got comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. As always, if you'd like to know more about your prostate, have a look at this video or alternatively this video here. And if you'd like to join our growing community and take part in our live event, please follow the link in the description down below. We do have a live event that airs on the last Thursday of every month. It's 7.30 uh, Brisbane time, 7.30 p.m. on the last Thursday of every month. If you'd like to get a question into me for us to discuss on this live event, please follow the link. Hope to see you then. Take care.